So a lot of articles that talk about superfoods for cats are mainly plant-based, you know, stuff that isn't part of their natural diet, like blueberries, flax seeds, pumpkin, you know, cranberries, things like that. Like maybe they can help and maybe they are superfoods, but I think that the true superfoods for cats is to fix and upgrade and improve the base of their diet with meat-based appropriate superfoods. Then on top of that add, we can't expect to add these blueberries and cranberries superfoods to a processed food diet and expect our cats' lives to change, you know, like miraculously. We should focus on the superfoods that are carnivore friendly for our cats and feed fresh whole foods. And then if we still need to, we can use these plant-based superfoods to kind of fill in nutritional gaps instead of using synthetic supplements. So in this video, we're gonna talk about superfoods that are actually appropriate for cats, superfoods that I feed Jericho every week, and some superfoods that I eat as well. Hey friends, it's Jess and Jericho. It is a blessing that you are here. Hallelujah. And I just want to say before we get into the superfoods that there are five main categories of superfoods. So we have muscle meats. That's typically the type of meat that we eat. Muscular organs, things like tongue, heart, tripe, gizzards, etc. Then we have raw meaty bones. Then we have secreting organs. And then we have, you know, small amounts of supplements here and there that are whole food that we can use to fill in nutritional gaps so that we don't have to rely on synthetic supplements. So the first superfood is lean beef. This is a superfood for zinc, and this is just nice to include in the diet. You wanna to try to aim for about half ruminant red, red meat and then half bird and poultry, just so that you have some variety because you know I understand that cats would not hunt down beef in the wild, but technically they wouldn't hunt down chicken or turkey either. They would go for smaller birds, rabbits, mice, voles, other small mammals, and a little bit of fish and the, you know, little sea creatures. But we can't feed all of those foods all the time, so we do our best to use uh, whole foods that provide these nutrients that our cats need. And processed food uses all of these <laughs> ingredients anyway. So lean beef is great for zinc, and lean beef would fit into the muscle meat category. Another muscle meat that is a superfood is pork tenderloin. So I eat a lot of beef. I do not eat pork, but I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to be starting giving, I'm going to start giving Jericho some pork because it is a superfood for B vitamins. And B vitamins, you know, you do get them from other meats, but pork tenderloin specifically is much higher in thiamine and also folate. So it's just a nicer food to use that is meat, you know, specific, carnivore appropriate for cats. The next superfood is chicken hearts. So chicken hearts, well, I'm sure you already know hearts are very high in taurine because it's a hardworking muscle, but I found that chicken heart compared to beef heart, for example, chicken heart is much higher in taurine. Chicken heart can also provide some zinc, so you'll get a little bit of both. And hearts, no matter where they come from, fit into the muscular organs category. The next superfood for cats is raw beef green tripe. Now this is not the tripe that you see at the grocery store. This is completely white. It's been bleached, it's been scalded. That's not the same thing. Beef green tripe is only available through raw pet food suppliers because in its natural state with the uh, fermented and <laughs> pre-digested plant materials, that's not human grade quality, so you won't see that at the grocery store. It's been cleaned out, washed, bleached, and scalded, whereas beef green tripe, raw green tripe that you get through a raw pet food supplier, that does contain all of the pre-digested plant matter, and that's what's nutritious for our cats. So beef tripe is, green tripe, is a superfood for manganese. And manganese can be different, is can be difficult because really it's, green tripe and blue mussels, but I found that green tripe is easier to source when you're buying online, whereas blue mussels, I can't really find that anywhere. And tripe is also much more affordable. So for example, for Jericho, for two months, I need one pound of tripe and I get that from Raw Feeding Miami, it's five bucks. So it's really, really easy. It stinks, but it's nutritious. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have to use a manganese supplement because the other meat-based ingredients, it doesn't provide enough. So you would need to use tripe, 
blue mussels or a manganese supplement. Oysters may be a little bit, but I've found that tripe or blue mussels is really what's going to fulfill that manganese requirement that our cats need. And beef tripe is the muscular organ as well. It's a hardworking muscle because it helps digest the food. <laughs> The next superfood is chicken wangs, raw meaty bone chicken wangs. So this is a superfood because this is the most natural source of calcium. And it's also a superfood because chewing on whole raw meaty bones provides a lot of mental stimulation. It gets, gets the jaw going, works the facial muscles, and it can also prevent black and tartar from forming on the teeth. So this is Ya's beautiful natural toothbrush. So it's a superfood all around because it provides all of these different types of benefits. You can also say chicken necks, Jericho eats chicken wings and chicken necks, whole prey, Jericho eats whole prey quail. So really these are all superfoods for natural sources of calcium, specifically with raw meaty bones, plus the added benefits, the physical benefits beyond nutritional benefits. And that obviously fits in the raw meaty bones category. For secreting organs, superfoods, we have liver. This is typically a mandatory ingredient in homemade diets just because the liver is the largest secreting organ. It's high in taurine, high in vitamin A, and a lot of the amino acids that cats need. But if you go with ruminant liver, for example, beef liver, that's going to be higher in copper. So you might find, again, with white meat, it might be low in copper. So you can use beef liver to fulfill that requirement. The other one from ruminants and also pork is spleen. So spleen is a rich source of iron. If you're finding that the diet is low in iron, add some spleen in there and it'll, it'll fulfill those requirements. So the superfoods that we both eat are beef kidney, beef liver, and beef spleen. Yes, I do eat them too. I'm also on the carnivore diet. And so we share those ingredients to keep them fresher longer so that they aren't sitting in the freezer for five months. <laughs> The next superfood is oily fish, and this is specifically for vitamin D. So Jericho's diet consists of sardines, canned in water, no salt. And I also make salmon for myself a couple times a week, and I can't really cook salmon and not give him some, so he gets a little bit of both. But with these fish ingredients, we only stick around five to 6% of the overall diet because too much fish can cause picky eating. So we only use enough to fulfill vitamin D requirements, but really that's the best and most natural cat appropriate source of vitamin D is any type of oily fish. I do sardines and salmon. If you need help getting started with homemade cat food, I do have a homemade cat food starter kit. It's a self-paced video course where I'll show you how to plan for everything and how to feed homemade raw safely and confidently. It also comes with complete recipes using all of these ingredients, and they are complete NRC standards for adult cats. Check the link in the description below for my homemade cat food starter kit so you can get started on homemade cat food easily and confidently. The next superfood is eggs. So eggs are a complete protein and the yolk specifically can provide a lot of choline. Typically with choline, it might look deficient or look low because USDA data doesn't always report on choline for, you know, for food ingredients, but egg yolks are really great. Jericho eats raw egg yolks and uh, it also provides a lot of fat soluble vitamins and, and fat as well to help absorb those vitamins. So it's an all around, you know, vitamin mineral supplement. But again, with like things like oily fish with, with the secreting organs, we only use a small amount. We want the bulk of the nutrients to come from muscle meat and then from the muscular organs and then the raw meaty bones and then the secreting organs and then the supplements. So it, it goes in that hierarchy because at the end of the day, we're trying to mimic what whole prey provides. The majority of whole prey is muscular tissue. So muscle meat, then the muscular organs, and then so, and then so on from there. So now we're going to get into some superfoods that aren't technically carnivore, but they are appropriate for cats. And if we don't use these, we would have to use a synthetic supplement. So we really have to decide you know, which, which do we prefer? So for iodine, I use kelp. And, you know, I, I also like this for the benefits of preventing plaque and tartar from forming on the teeth because of the enzymes and the bacteria that it produces. So, and you don't need a lot of it either. So you just use a very, very tiny amount. And I'm not concerned about stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I just use it because I'd rather use that than a 
concentrated, you know, synthetic supplement. The next superfood that a lot of raw feeders use is nutritional yeast. I do use this as well for both of us, and that is for B vitamins. And it does provide other nutrients as well, but again, we're just using that small amount to fulfill the B requirements. So let's say if you aren't using pork or the pork isn't enough for the B vitamins, then you could use nutritional yeast to just fill in that gap. Next is vitamin E. Vitamin E is necessary. Unfortunately, it is way higher in plant-based foods than it is meat-based foods, so we will have to use a supplement. Now, some people might use nuts and seeds because those are high in vitamin E, but the problem with that is that it's also high in fat, specifically PUFAs, polyunsaturated fat, and the more PUFA in the diet, the more vitamin E you need. So you're gonna keep using more nuts and seeds for the vitamin E, but that's also gonna raise the PUFA, which also raises the amount of vitamin E that you need. And that's going to increase the calories and therefore your cat's gonna get less of the meat-based ingredients that he needs and more of nuts and seeds, which he doesn't need. And that's what their prey eats. <laughs> so what I use for vitamin E is an E oil. And this is, it's not ideal, it's not perfect, but he needs vitamin E. It's derived from non-GMO soy. So I look at this as, okay, it's, it, it's an isolated form, mixed tocopherols, that's natural vitamin E. It's isolated from the soy. It's not crushed up soybeans or ground soybeans. It's a liquid concentrated. It is mixed with olive oil just to, to keep it preserved, but it's one drop a day. You know, it's not the end of the world. It's better than having a nutritional deficiency. So what do you do with all this information? How do you feed superfoods to your cat? So I'm only doing this as an informational uh, guideline when you're looking for commercial foods or when you're looking for a recipe or if you're formulating your own recipe. This information is not to tell you to just blindly start adding stuff to your cat's diet because if you're already feeding a commercially complete diet, even if it's a processed diet, there's a lot of synthetic supplements, you don't wanna overdo it. So if you're going to feed a little bit of fresh food here and there as a snack, as a treat, you don't want to exceed, I would say 20% of your cat's overall diet. But really this information is more so that you have a template and a guide to base which food or which recipe is appropriate for your cat. So don't start blindly adding supplements and foods and, and ingredients to your cat's diet. This is more, okay, if you're looking at a cat food label, does this cat food, does this include some kind of liver? Does this include some tripe or manganese source? Does this include kelp? Does this include, so you wanna look through the label or if you're looking for a homemade cat food recipe, look for these ingredients and you'll see in the nutritional analysis that it is complete using these whole foods. Just remember that we want to use the base of our cat's food, the majority of the food that our cats eat should be these whole food, meat-based, carnivore-appropriate superfoods rather than topping off a processed diet with some blueberries and cranberries. That's not really going to be life-changing. Check the link in the description below for my homemade cat food starter kit so you can get started on homemade cat food easily and confidently. Thank you so much for watching.